Hello everybody, I'm Liam Smith, this is a shot of wildlife and today we are at Whitlingham Great Broad. Unlike the well-known Norfolk Broads, Whitlingham Great Broad is a relatively new addition to the landscape. Up until the late 1980s, this area would have been floodplains and wet meadows, but with lots of large-scale building projects in nearby Norwich, the landowner got permission to excavate gravel from the site. I cannot find exactly when gravel extraction finished, but in 2004 the lake was handed over to Whitlingham Charitable Trust, who manage it and the surrounding area as Whitlingham Country Park. So that's enough history about the place. The real reason that we've come here today, as the real reason is we go to everywhere we visit, is to see the wildlife. So let's take a closer look. With its large body of water, extensive areas of aquatic vegetation and surrounding grassland, Whitlingham provides a great habitat for waterfowl. The most numerous species here, and one of the most numerous species in the country, is the grey lag goose. These geese are various shades of grey with white rumps. They have orangey pink beaks and legs and are often seen in large flocks. Grey lags are the ancestors of most domestic geese breeds and due to hybridisation and escapees, there are often strangely coloured individuals amongst their flocks. Amongst the grey lags there is another species, the Canada Goose. As their name suggests, they are a non-native species that is originally from North America. They were introduced for hunting, but were found to not be suitable. They then established a wild breeding population and there are now around 60,000 pairs in the UK. Canada geese are slightly larger than grey lags and have a black head and neck with a striking white throat patch. There is one Canada goose at Whitlingham that can never leave. It has a deformity known as angel wing on its right wing that prevents it from flying. Luckily, the resident grey lags seem to have accepted it as one of their own. The largest bird at Whitlingham Broad and one that is easily identified is the mute swan. Throughout spring and summer, most adult swans have paired up and are busy raising cygnets but here, there is a population of non-breeding birds. These are either birds that have not got a mate, could not secure a territory, or that are too young to breed. At the far end of the broad, there is one pair that have successfully nested. When I first saw them a few weeks ago, they had four young cygnets, but now, they are down to just the one. This bird here is the cause of confusion amongst lots of new birders and is often misidentified or called a hybrid. It is in fact the most common duck in the UK, a mallard. Over the years, many selectively bred farmyard mallards have escaped into the wild. They bred with the wild ducks and their genetics have completely diluted the gene pool. From my experience, I would say that more than a quarter of all wild mallards have some domestic duck ancestry.
there is one more species of waterfowl that is common to Whittingham, and it is another introduced species, the Egyptian goose. This bird is smaller than the grey lags and has a distinctive brown spot around each eye and in the centre of its breast. Their backs are a brown colour and they have a large white patch and a greeny blue speculum on each wing. Although they are called a goose, they are actually a member of the shell duck family, as you can see here with the water bouncing off like water from a duck's back. Apart from the ducks and geese, there are other species here at Whittlingham. The gin clear water is deep and it supports lots of species of fish. With these fish come birds that feed upon them. I have been lucky enough to catch a few of them on film, so let's have a look. This exotic looking bird is the Great Crested Grebe. They are the size of a small duck and brown over most of their body. They have a white chest and face but their most obvious feature is their orange, brown and black head crest. Great Crested Grebes have a streamlined body shape, a sharp pointed beak and their feather webbed toes are on short legs at the back of their bodies. All of these features make them well suited to life on and below water. They are experts at catching fish and aquatic invertebrates, staying underwater for up to 30 seconds and sometimes diving to more than 20 foot deep. There is another species here that are expert anglers. These cormorants were unfortunately too fast for me and my camera taking flight just as I saw them. However, I did manage to get some good footage of one here a few weeks ago. Cormorants have many of the same adaptations as great crested grebes but are much larger and much less colourful. They often roost communally and sometimes in fish rich areas can be seen in flocks of more than 50 individuals. Without sounding like a bad workman and blaming my tools, the camera and lens that I use are quite old and do not automatically focus when shooting video. That means that this footage is not as good as I wanted it to be, but you can still make out this grey heron standing amongst the vegetation on the far bank. Grey herons are a beautiful bird that stalk through the shallows with their gangly legs and long neck. When they see a fish, crustacean, amphibian or any other small creature, they lunge forward and snatch it with their long pointed beak. Grey herons are a species that I've seen a lot but have been unlucky in not getting any good footage of thus far. Okay then guys, that's all I've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the whistle stop tour of Whitlingham Broad and some of the wildlife that calls it home. Um, if you have enjoyed it, obviously like, share, subscribe and all that stuff. And also, if you can give me some suggestions on places that you think I should visit to do a wildlife tour, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.